Well, Rites of Passage is a basically, it's a program where the men of the community will take the younger boys and teach them survival skills or skills that teach them how to become men. Um, in our community, it's, it needs to be a lot more of it, but definitely Rites of Passage is basically men teaching the younger boys to become men in their communities. It's been progressive. I mean, we def throughout the months, you can see different changes in some of the young men. Um, what what the real thing is when we measure it, we measure it through the griot circles after each phase. Uh, we have three phases. We we went through our cultural phase. We're in our educational phase now, which we're at their tail end, which we'll, they'll be getting to meet with the griot circle in about a week or so, which the griot circle is a group of elders to ask them different questions about what they learned through the, the phases, um, which basically helps us track their progress of seeing how far they're moving along. And at the end, we have a pre and a post test where we can really measure how far they came and seeing what they got if they learned anything from each phase. Well the affirmation circle is something we do at the beginning and at the end. What, what it does is we come together and we talk about and we say I am because we are and it basically puts us all on the same page of we you know, togetherness, a unity thing that there's no forward progress without the whole group moving forward. It basically sets the tone. And we also talk about how they're feeling that day in one word. You know, and usually the kids give them the one word of how they're feeling. And, and it's actually, a, you know, a truthful thing because some of them tell you how they're actually feeling in one word. And then we'll come back at the end and we'll do the same thing, but then we'll end what our closing is and then what we look forward to for the next group. You know, the imaging of, of the young black males in our community, um, I think it's important because we're working on redeveloping on what that image is. As you can see, we have some younger guys that we're going to mold for the next coming years. It's not a program that you could say you can have one year and think that they become men at the end of the year. It's definitely a process that we want to keep continuing, but it's, it's about imaging and teaching our young boys how to become men and surround them with enough positive men that they can look at and say, hey, I want to be like him when I grow up. And then we'll have mentorship towards the end of it where they'll link up with certain people, which can help them whether if they're pursuing college, um, sports, or even just going to, you know, going straight from school and going straight to work. We're, we're going to set them up with enough resources for these young men to be successful in life. You know, in school, they have about, what, 20 something days, maybe less than that in a month of February. And I don't think that you can really teach them enough about African-American history in about a certain amount of days. The civil rights thing was we choose was that during that time period, our people were living a total different lifestyle. Um, a lot of stuff was desegregated, well segregated, and then it desegregated. And a lot of marches and a lot of good things came from that. There was a lot of passion about the community. There were a lot of positive men at that time that were actually fighting for the rights of our people to become treated as human beings and not second-class citizens. We wanted to expose them to that. That's why we had this trip, which was a civil rights tour, was to definitely put them in the footsteps of those people and learning about those people in those areas. Actually, we started a trip on April 4th. We actually arrived in Memphis, Tennessee, which we, were, we toured the Lorraine Motel. Um, which was basically the National Civil Rights Museum there, but it was actually the anniversary of Martin Luther King being slain there. So Jesse Jackson, the kids got to see Jesse Jackson and actually hear him speak. Um, a couple of us got a chance to take a picture with Jesse Jackson, which a couple of them will share their, you know, what what their experiences were on a trip. But when we actually were in Jackson, Mississippi, we actually went to the Mecca Everest house. Um, when I got off the bus, it, you know, nothing was planned this way. You know, a lot of people think it was planned, but it really wasn't. It was just perfect timing that when I met with Miss Minnie Wat Watson, she took me in and we talked about that Mrs. Everest was in town, but she wasn't expected to be at the house till 2.30. We actually got there about 1, 12.30 or 1 o'clock. We, when we began our process of going through the house. She was telling us the story about Mecca Evers, talking about Mrs. Evers and the struggles that she went through. And there was a knock on the door of Miss Evers 
actually walked in. So our young boys got a chance to not only meet her, but talk to her, hug her. And it was a pretty emotional thing because we had a couple old elders of our elder men that were there and their, their age where they are at, they were old enough to know what happened and what she went through in life. So it was a pretty emotional thing. But I think that that's the one picture that I think that, you know, I think these kids, it'll last for them for the rest of their life. Originally, when we wrote the grant, you know, the grant was for to, to reach out to the Wilkinsburg uh, football program. Um, we wanted about 40 young you know, boys to be able to teach this whole thing of leadership and community and teach them to become men. Um, when I went up there, we recruited and we actually ended up with about 27 and 30 kids that we got during the duration. You know, some kids fall behind because of different, um, you know, activities that are in, but we, we maintained about 20 something kids strong that come every Monday. We may go for between 17 to 20, but we, we definitely have about 20 kids strong every Monday evening. Um, we would like to open it up next year to more kids across the city because, you know, what I, you know, talking to some of the parents, they seen that this was a need that, that it was a group that, you know, that could teach that, teach their young boys how to become men and also experience them, expose them to history, which is very important. When I, I'm noticing from the parents also that they want their kids to, to actually experience certain things because, like I said, being at the Lorraine Motel, I've never been there. You only see it in the history books. My kids could say they were there. As far as the community, we need everyone. Like, there's people that could come in and speak to the kids, um, do different groups to work with groups with us, especially when we're on our cultural phase. There's a lot of people in the community that know about African culture and things like that. And then there's education. And there's a lot of community activists that I know that can help out with the community piece. Um, I could be reached at Addison. You know, I, I'm all for meeting different people and to come really wrap their hands around these kids because it, it's a lack of resources. Resources, and we need as many resources as possible to help with these kids. But like I said, we're open to bringing kids from all over the city to really be a part of this because we really don't want to minimize it to just one small thing because it's, it's a much needed program. Yeah, I'm at Addison Behavioral Care. Uh, you can call at 412-731-2353. You can leave your message for me at the at the uh, receptionist. And I'll definitely call back. Um, I'm very interested in hearing people that's interested and, you know, sign up with programs, it, you know, rights of passage isn't our only program. We have different services, but as far as with the rights of passage, we're looking forward because we're coming into a new class in September. We'll have the same kids that's been there, but we want to add more, but I could be reached at Addison Behavioral Care, like I said, at 412-731-2353.